Today is the Sabbath day. There should be no buying, no selling. That damn store right there is supposed to be closed down. Bro, All these eat. stores right here are supposed to be closed down on the Sabbath day. That's and right. guess what? The more and more you see the men of the Lord go out and start teaching, the more and more of our people come back, change their minds, the more and more we're going to turn this earth right side up. Because right now, it's upside down. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. You got a bunch of good questions. I hope, hey, sister, you pay attention. I don't know you know you Israel, because you got fringes on it. I remember seeing you at, uh, on Leesburg Road that one time. But I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you why you can't sin. Why you can't sin. And of course, you know you can't sin. Today is Sabbath day, for one. Read this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. Right for thou art holy people. What did God say? For thou art holy people. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, you will, we are holy people. What's your name? Tyree. Tyree, I'm Kaliah. We are the holy people that God chose. Like the brothers have been going over for the longest, the people on this side right here are the chosen people of God. We can't do what the other nations do. Right. He says that what? For thou art holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord thy God hath holy. chosen thee. What did God say? Watch this. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. The Lord thy God has chosen you, and you, and you, he's chosen us, to be a special people unto himself. So God chose one people to be what? To be a special people unto himself. Read on. Above all what, people. Read, what? read that again? Above all people. I need you to stretch that word. Read it again. Above. Above. No, below. Above. Equal to. Above. On the bottom of society of. Above. Above. God chose you to be above That's right. all people that are upon the face of the earth. But wait a minute, you're not above our people today. Bring it out. So what the hell happened? Yeah. Why are you on the bottom of all people on the earth when the Bible states that we're supposed to be above all people on the face, on the face of the earth? What happened? Sin. Now, give me numbers 14, 18. I'm going to show you something. Because your question was, why do we got to pay for this? Why do we have to pay? I'm going to show you something. The same things that we suffered under the hand of, of our oppressor right here, just like we got to pay for the sins of our forefathers, they got to pay for the sins of their forefathers. Right. So everything that they've done to us, they're going to pay for. Stay right here. I'm going to show you. It's in the scriptures. The thing is, all these churches up and down the street ain't teaching our people nothing. Watch this. Right. The book of Numbers chapter 14 and verse 18. The Lord is long suffering. The Lord is long suffering, bro. Come on. And of great mercy. He got great mercy, read. Forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means carrying the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third. So he's reading, read, I want you to listen to this. I want you to listen to every word of this. Read it, read it again. The Lord is long suffering and of great mercy. He's long suffering and of great mercy. Come on. Forgiving iniquity. He forgives iniquity, meaning you can be forgiven. If you turn from your evil ways, if we turn from sin, we can be forgiven, come on. And transgression. And our transgressions, we can be forgiven of our transgressions, come on. And by no means, create the guilty. He says, by no means what? No means, create the guilty. By no means are you acquitted of those sins. Right. Meaning, just because I forgave you of the sin, does not mean that there's not gonna be a punishment for the sin. That's come on. Right. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers. Visiting the sins of the fathers? Upon the children. Upon who? Upon the children. Now, this happened to your forefathers, right? This happened to your forefathers? Bring it up. Because our forefathers sinned. So this happened to our forefathers. Right. All right? Read on. Visiting the visiting the iniquity, the sins of the forefathers. Come on. Unto the third and fourth generation. Unto the third and fourth generation of them that sinned. Guess what? You're that generation of the fathers who sinned. That's, That's why you're still right. here in captivity right yeah. now. You're of the forefathers that broke the commandments of God. Right. That's why you're in the condition that you're in right now. Now you said, how come they can do they, what they're doing, but we can't do what we're doing? When you're reading in the scriptures, there are two different people that the scriptures are making a big difference between. Give me Genesis chapter 25. Bring it up. Give me Genesis chapter 25 and verse 25 real quick. Because the people that did this to you right here, they that's your brother. Your brother did this to you. 
the blessing. The officer was going over something. Your brother Esau, the so-called white man, he was giving a blessing. Give me that in uh, Genesis 27 and 38 real quick. I'm gonna, hold on. Before we go to that, give me Genesis 25, 25. Let me show you something. Read. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 25. And the first came out red. Oh, oh, was like a hairy garment. So we're talking about the birth of two children. Rebecca had twins in her womb. You remember the story? She had twins in her womb. All right? Jacob and Esau. This is the prophecy of Jacob, the so-called black man, the Israelites today, and Esau, the so-called white man today. Right. It says the first son came out red all over, all over like a hairy garment. Uh -huh. So look, what do we call the so-called white man today in South Carolina? Bring it up. What do we call him? What's his nickname? I call him, I, I don't want to say it out loud. I call what? him kind of words. Call him a damn redneck. Why we call him red? Why do we call him rednecks? If you go over to the white man right now, you smack on the back of his neck, what color it turn? Bring it up. It turn red. We call him redneck because his skin looks red. His blood, you can see it through his skin. That was the Bible is explaining. The first came out red all over like a hairy garment. If they don't shave, what happened to their skin, bruh? If they don't shave, what happens? It gets real hairy. That's why they came up with a Gillette razor. That's why they had to come up with that thing. They need that Gillette razor to keep the hair off of them. It says the first son came out red all over like a hairy garment. This is your so-called white man today. Read. And they call his name Esau. They called his name Esau. Now I'm going to show you what the Lord did with Esau. For after, after we read this right here, read on. And after that came his brother out. So after Esau was born, the red and hairy son was born. Now his brother is coming out. Come on. And he took hand, took hold of Esau's heel. So now why they ain't describe his color? They described Esau's color, but they did not describe the other son, the other son's color. Why? Why they didn't say nothing about his color? Because he looked like everybody else on the earth. That's but when Esau came out, they was like, hold on, wait a minute. What is this? What's the first time I seen something like this right here? Call his name Esau. It means red. Edom means red. Now give me Genesis 28 and 30. 28 and 30, right? 27 and 30. I'm going to show you. Because if you look in the history, they have created war all over the earth. They have made war with every race on the earth. But the atrocities, the, the rape, the robbery, the murder, the pillage of the so-called black man and woman is what took place right here in America. Yeah, Let me show you what God did with him. Read. The book of Genesis, chapter 28, verse 38. And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing? So now they're out there with their father in the last day. He said, You ain't got no more blessings, father? You are you didn't care about all the blessings? Read. My father, bless me. He said, Bless me, father. Even me also, oh my father. And Esau lifted his up his voice and wept. So now Esau started crying. Esau did not get the blessing. He did not get a blessing from his father. He cried to his father, bless me, father, bless me, please bless me. So now let's see what happens. Read. And Isaac, his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. So now... God told Esau that his dwellings, meaning where you live at, is going to be the fatness of the earth. Who lives in the best places on the earth, sis? Who lives in the best places on the earth? Brother Tyrone? Who lives in the best places on the earth? Places Yeah, but who lives there? Who lives in the best places on the earth? The who the wealthy? The ones in control. Just say their name. The white man. The white man. You got to be real. We got to be real with each other. It's the white man. Nobody care if he's standing up out here. He can be pumping gas right there. He know he lives in the best places of the earth. He knows that he is in control of the earth. Why? Because I'm going to read this again. He, read this again. Listen good. Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. He says, Esau, your dwelling is going to be the fatness of the earth. Come on. And of the dew of heaven from above and from the in the dew of heaven from above come on and by the sword by what does thy sword by thy sword read it again 
and by thy sword. By your sword, by your weapons, by your Gatling guns, right. by your 9 millimeters, right. by your AR-15s, and by your sword. Thou shalt thou live. That's how you're going to live. That's how you're going to take everything on the earth. So the sun that came out red and hairy was the sun that got the blessing to be a ruler and a controller of a sword, right. which represents war. Right. The sword represents war. They are brought pure havoc on this earth because the blessing that they received was the blessing of war. Right. That's why you can roll up to a sister now and be like, hey, sis, what's your nationality? And she's like, I'm black. I'm African-American. They have changed our mentality and we don't even think about who we are no more. We don't even realize that we are calling ourselves after a color in a crayon box and after a, after a name that is two white men. African-American is two white men. But how do they keep this thing going? You said it earlier. They do it through their media. They do it through their social media. Give what's that, uh, Revelations 13? Revelations 13, give me Revelations 13 real quick. I believe it's five or six or seven. Revelations 13, the, in his mouth. Read that, read this real quick. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 5. Let me show you something about the mouth of Esau. Read. And there was given unto him a mouth. A what? A mouth. To do what? Speaking great things. How does he speak great? How do you learn of uh, uh, Rasheed Carter head being decapitated a few uh, a couple of months ago? How do we learn that? Hundreds of protesters assembled just outside of Taylorsville, Mississippi. Many of the attendees were from the Israel United in Christ movement. They were there for the family of Rashim Carter, a black man who went missing on October last year. Days earlier, he had told his mother and the police that white men in his community were targeting him. His remains were found a month later in this nearby forest. His head had been severed from its body. His spinal cord was discovered in a separate area from his head. The local police department had originally ruled out foul play, saying animals could have been responsible for Carter's body parts being in separate locations. That doesn't add up, according to family members, including his mother Tiffany. We're going to keep this fight going no matter what it takes. Yeah. We're going to keep this fight going with God first, and we're going to get it accomplished. We're going we to stand. We're going to stand in solidarity. We're going to stand in unity, and um, we're doing just that today. This was the third protest to take place in Taylorsville following Rasheem's death. Police had refused organizers a permit, but demonstrators marched into the town anyway. There's still so many questions regarding Rasheem Carter's death, and the family say they'll continue their fights until they get them. How do we learn that? Social media. Right. How, how do we learn of uh, the different... Uh, what, what was the brother name in uh, Freddie Gray? How do we learn of Freddie Gray? How do we learn of uh, Mike Brown? Mike Brown? Right. What was the source that gave us the information on our brothers being killed and shot down in these different areas? What was it? Social media. Right. Read it again. And there was given unto him a mouth. Given unto who? Given unto Esau a mouth. Speaking great things. Speaking great things. Come on. And blasphemies. Blasphemies. And power uh -huh. was given unto him. To, conti to continue 42 months. So the power was given unto him so that he could continue to deceive us. So if I say, sister, what's your name? Hey, hey, what is it? Claudia, what's your nationality? See? Isaiah 1 and 3. Let me show you this. Come right here. This is why this is important. It, here's, the, here's the best thing going on in your life today. What you're hearing right now. That's you can't hear this news nowhere else. You can go sit at church tomorrow, you're not going to hear this. Right. All your life, how old are you? 40. 40 years old, I'm 43. And you're just now about to learn your nationality. Your whole life you thought you was black, but your shirt is black. Your whole life you would have called yourself an African American. But those are two white men. That is not what God called you. God says, you're a princess, an Israelite of the tribe of Judah. Right. I agree with you guys right here. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. Bring it up. The ox. Know this owner. God says an ox knows his owner. You familiar with South Carolina? You familiar with an ox? Okay, read. And the ass 
his master's crib. He said a donkey knows where his master's crib is. You know what a donkey is, right? You familiar with a donkey? If you take that donkey three miles down the street today, where that donkey gonna be at tomorrow? It's gonna find his way back home. It's gonna be right in your backyard looking for some more food, looking for some more water. It says an ass, a, 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 a ox and a donkey knows their master's crib. Come on. But Israel, but the children of Israel, right here on the side. This is who you are. If you consider yourself an American black, you are from the tribe of Judah. You're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Would you consider yourself an American black man? Are you an American black man? Yeah. All right, so you too would be from the tribe of Judah. Right. What we're showing our people is that we have discontinued and lost our nationality. Black is a color. African American is two white men. Right. You have to care enough in order for you to get the kingdom of heaven. Right. Because the kingdom of heaven don't exist for a so-called black man. The kingdom of heaven does not exist for a Puerto Rican. Right. Those names are not written on the 12 gates that are, that, that are in the kingdom of heaven. Right. You gotta fall back and come back and learn your true nationality. But how are you gonna do that if nobody teaches you? Give me Acts chapter eight. You can only do that if someone who has an understanding of the scriptures, somebody that's endowed with the spirit of God can really come and teach you the Bible. Not somebody that gives you a, a, a nice little song, a shuck and a job, and passes the collection plate around to collect money on Sunday. Right. When you walk out of that church, you walk out with a good feeling, but you still don't know your nationality. Right. You still don't know what God requires of you. Right. Read this real quick. This is the book of Acts, chapter 80, verse 31. Come on. Right. And he said, how can I? How can you learn your nationality? How can you know who you are? How can you know what God requires of you except what? Except some man should guide me. You're looking at your guidance right now. Right. You are looking at your teachers right now. That's because right. before today, sister, 40 years, you thought you was black. Right. For 40 years, you thought you was an African-American. That thing don't even exist. Right. Where is this land of black? Can I go to the land of black? The island of black? Where that at? That ain't the land of black. That is a place. You notice how he just said Africa? Right. Now I'm going to ask you. What was the name of that continent before it got the name Africa, and how did it get the name Africa? Bring it up. You don't know that, because they don't teach us that. That land before then was called Mizraim, or the land of Ham. That's right. All right? Now, how did it get the name Africa? All right, I got another question. How did America become known as America? Because we say we're what? African American. So if we don't know how how Africa got his name, how did America get his name? Where does it come from? I, you can't, that's, that's, that's the wrong. Look, we didn't know either, but now we know what questions to ask our people so that we can help them think. Shalom Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. My familia is the 12. America is named after Amerigo Vespucci. He came here before Columbus. That's why the country is named after him, America, not Columbus. Africa was named after Leo Scipio Africanus, a white man that conquered Hannibal during the Second Punic Wars. Right. So they changed the name of the continent to fit their last name. Now, while we're in slavery, guess what we learned? Guess what, guess what we're taught? First, you're a nigger. Then you're a Negro. Now 1863 comes around, you're, uh, uh, you're emancipated from slavery. You don't know nothing. You don't got land. You don't got uh, uh, property. You don't got nothing. So now you get a new nationality. It's called Negro. So years pass, you're a Negro for what? 10 years, maybe 15 years. After 15 years, here comes Jesse Jackson. And now you're called Af, no. Before Jesse Jackson, you get the name Afro-American. Right. right. Then now Jesse Jackson comes on the scene. Now you get the name African-American. Right. Why in the hell is your name changing so much? Bring it out. 
Why? Why is your name changing? Has the Caucasians' name changed or are they still known as Caucasians today? Bring it up. They still know this called. Why have your name changed so many times? Somebody is trying to hide something. Right. Because what? Because we are the original. We are the real Jews, brother. Yeah. We are the real Jews. Give me Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. We lost our nationality. Yeah. It was taken from us during these times right here. What's your name, boy? Your name is Toby. What's your name? Kunta. Kunta Kente. No. Your name is Toby. No. What's your name, boy? Uh, Toby. What's, what, you can feel the energy watching that movie. Right. You can feel your soul being broken when you were watching Roots and they no. took his nationality. You can feel the spirit of the sister in the movie 12 Years a Slave when they took her children away from her and put them in slavery. Right. After slavery was abolished, so-called. But guess what? Today you are still slaves. Right. You're slaves right now because you think you're African American. Right. You think that you're black. Read what you got. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. What did God say? Read. And thou, even thyself, shalt dis discontinue from thine heritage. God says that you blacks, Hispanics and Native Indians, the children of Israel, because y'all brought the commandments of God, you're going to go into slavery and you're going to be discontinued from your heritage. Read. That I gave thee. That who gave him? That I gave thee. God said, I gave you this heritage. That heritage was to keep God's laws. We didn't keep God's laws. Just like we don't keep God's laws today. Right. Today is God's Sabbath day. That's right. Do you know what the Sabbath day is? Day it's day of rest. You know that too? When is the Sabbath day? Sabbath. It's today. It's not tomorrow. Oh, yeah. That was changed. Give me that in Daniel. Yeah, you see how you look like? What? <laughs> Give me that in Daniel. Give me Daniel real quick. I'm going to show you. Because we lost our nationality, we lost all the history that would make us a people today. Right. We lost the history that will unify us and make us the army of God today. Right. But what you're looking at is the resurrection of God's army back on the earth. That's right. We can read now. We understand that we are the Israelites according to the Bible. Right. We understand that it's our job to come and teach our people because the pastor in the church ain't teaching. All he's doing is collecting money. They want to buy jets, big mansions. Big, nice Rolls Royces, they want to live the good life. Ain't nobody, look, you see what kind of vehicles we got out here? We ain't got nothing. Just like you ain't got nothing. We want rulership back on this earth. There's nothing that they can give us in America that should satisfy us here. If you are satisfied in America, you are upholding this country and preventing the rise of your people. Read what you got. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 7, and verse 25. This is why you think Sunday is Sabbath day. Read. And he shall speak great words. He shall speak great words to the people of God. Come on. Against the most high. Against the most high. And shall wear out the saints. Of you are the saints. He shall do what? And shall wear out the saints of the most high. He done wore you out. He done wore you out so much that you think you're black. So much that you think you're African American. Right. So much that you think the Sabbath day is Sunday, which is the first day of the week. That's right. Right. When you look at your calendar, the first day you see is what? Sunday. Right. So if seventh day is if Sabbath is on the seventh day, how did Sunday become the day of worship when the Bible says that seventh day is Saturday, the day that we should rest and we're in reverence God? Because he wore you out and shall wear out the saints and think. To change the and think to change times and laws. He should think to change to change times and laws. Like I'm gonna ask you a question, sis. What time does the next day start? Yeah, you say twelve o'clock. What about you? Twelve. Twelve o'clock. I know you know. Guess what? The next day does not start at 12 o'clock. The next day starts when the sun go down according to God. Right. Read that again and shall do what? And think to change times and laws. He shall think to change times and laws. Here's the law that he changed. Men can marry men. It's okay in America. Women, y'all can marry women. That's okay in America. Right. Guess what? Not according to God. Who is the so-called, he done wore us out so much that we have given him authority over God's word. And because we roll with that spirit, because we live according to how he has projected society to us and how he has given us the freedom to break God's commandments, 
we okay with it. Right. The same man that did this to you, the same man that whooped your ancestors, raped your grandmothers and right. your mothers, he yeah. changed times, he changed laws, and then he gave us the, the, the license to break God's commandments. Because yeah. today is the Sabbath day. There shall be no buying, no selling. That damn store right there supposed to be closed down. Right. All these stores right here supposed to be closed down on the Sabbath day. That's and right. guess what? The more and more you see the men of the Lord go out and start teaching, the more and more of our people come back, change their minds, the more and more we're going to turn this earth right side up. That's because right, right now right. it's upside down. Why? Right. Because you're upside down, black man. That's right. Because you're upside down, sister. Jeez. You're the princess of the earth. That's right. You're the god of the earth. But they have turned us upside down and put us against our own God. That's They've changed the times and laws. Come on. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and a times, excuse me, and a time and dividing of times. So it says, and it should be given into his hands to change the times and to change the laws for a time. It's like I said, hey, bro, uh, you can hold my, uh, here go the keys of my car. You can hold it until 2 o'clock tomorrow. At 2 o'clock tomorrow, what you supposed to do? You supposed to bring my car back. God says right here that he gave power to this man, the so-called white man, that he's going to rule for a certain period of time. He gave it into his hands for a certain period of time to change times and to change laws. But now you see brothers standing up against what the white man has pushed in our society. What does that tell you? His time is up. His time is up. It is over with. Now, give me Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. Now it is time for us to wake up. Now it is time for us to come out of the sleep, come out of the slumber that they put us in. Walk out of the darkness that we have learned here in America. That's what we must do. Romans 13 and 11, read. This is the book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. Come on. Yeah. And that... And that knowing the time. The Bible says that, that knowing the time. You're supposed to be able to turn on your television, tell lie vision, tell lies to your vision. You're supposed to be able to turn on your television and see what's going on in the world and line it up with scriptures so that you'll know the time that you're living in. That's Read right. it again. And that knowing the time. That Our people don't know the time. It says that, that knowing the time. Come on. That now it is high time to awake out of sleep now it is high time to wake out of sleep why do you think there's war taking place in uh, uh these different parts of the earth Bring it up. why do you think these wars are going on yes you are exactly right they're going on because of us right. the most high is stirring the pot up he's stirring the pot up between these nations because he's going to make them fight each other for our salvation That's the right. elites of this country know that they got a princess in slavery they know they got the kings of the earth in slavery. Right. It's the princess and the kings that they'll know that they are the rightful owners of the earth. Right. God says, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Come on. For now, it, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. He says, now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. You ever heard grandma say, well, we're living in the last days. You ever heard your grandma say that? Yeah. We're living I, I, my said. Yeah, we're living in the last days. What, so, so what is supposed to happen in the last days according to them? What's supposed to happen? Like the, apocalypse. the apocalypse? What do you think? It's supposed to be what? The end. It's supposed to be the end. The end of what? Give me that in Ezra. Give me that in Ezra. Find that for me. You know what I want? Ezra 6? Yeah. Ezra chapter 6. Give me that in Ezra. I'm going to show you what the end is. Our people, they have a sense of knowledge. Just like they had a sense of knowledge in slavery. What was one of the songs that they sang when they was in the field? Swing low, sweet chariots, coming forth to carry me home. You know, you, you know that's what they song? Why? Why will, why will, what do they mean, swing low, sweet chariots to take them home? What does that even mean? What, something, some, something supernatural is going to come, scoop them up and take them back? Second edge. Is that what it is? Second edge. Second edge of six and nine. Is that what it is? They say, swing low, sweet chariot coming forth to carry me home. Why would they sing something like that? Because they're a chariot that's going to swing low and save the righteous and take them back home. Right. See, your enemies know those things that they, what they call them, IPAs, extra, what they call them? Uh, UFOs. They, we call them, they were called UFOs, now they call them, UAP. huh? UAPs, which stands for what? 
IAP. IAP. Aerial Identified Phenomenon. Phenomenon. They know that that's not a phenomenon. You think the Most High God gave the white man the understanding to build an airplane, but he ain't got angels and a host that could create something more extravagant than an airplane? Think about that. You're the God of the earth. You're the God of the universe. And you gave the information and knowledge to these people that make airplanes. I want Ezra, 2nd Ezra 6 and 9. Stop quoting. Read what you got. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world. Who is Esau? You wasn't here, but who is Esau? We went over it. Esau, red and hairy. Who is he? Red and hairy. Think about it. They get red. We smack one in the neck, they get red. The white man. Right. The white man is Esau. When you're reading the Bible, the so-called white man in the Bible, his name is Esau. This is why they changed everybody's name. So that when you open the scriptures, you can't identify who they are and you can't identify who you are. Right. Got the question? What's your question? Esau's here, um, um, the inheritance. Come here, I can't hear you. Esau was mad because he didn't get he the inheritance, inheritance. Okay. but he did get an inheritance. Okay. His inheritance was the sword. Right. He got blessed with the knowledge of war. That's why, now think about it. Go back, I want you to hold your, hold your, hold your thought. Hold your thought, I'm gonna read this real quick, read that. For Esau is the end of the world. Remember, we were talking about what does the end of the world mean? What does that look like? What does that mean? For Esau is the end of the world, come on. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. Now, hold this. Give me Genesis chapter 25, verse 25. Let's go back real quick. We're going to go back. I'm going to show you. This whole thing is spiritual. What y'all got to do is dig in the scriptures. Y'all got to come to the school. You got to learn your nationality and start teaching your people. Right, that's where you located. It's going to be on that flyer. We make sure it's on the back of that flyer. Right. Now, I want, now listen up. Listen up. Give him the flyer. Now listen real good. Because look, the worst thing that you can do is leave here today and ain't got no understanding of what we're talking about. The Lord called you here. You think that this loudspeaker and the brothers that's out there telling you to come over here you don't look at that carnally. Bring it out. You got to look at that spiritually. Right. God chose for your feet to hear these words today. Right. I'm just a vessel that's reading what's in the Bible. Bring it out. The pastor in the church, he ain't reading this. Right. He's saying, pass the collection plate. Right. We ain't got collection plates because we don't want collection plates. That's we right. want souls for God's kingdom. That's right. Read. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 25 and verse 25. Listen up real quick. Listen up real quick before you leave. Genesis 25, 25. And the first came out red. The first son from Rebecca came out red all over like a hairy garment. He came out red all over like a hairy garment. Come on. And they called his name Esau. And they called his name Esau. Now, who on the earth is red and hairy? Out of the nations of people, who is red and hairy? White people. You can't get around it. It's the so-called white man. He is red. I was trying to look for one so I could show you. Like, if I was looking for one so I could show you. He is red and hairy. That's why he's called redneck here in South Carolina and many other parts of the states. We call him a redneck. It says the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they did what? And after that, uh, and they did what? They called and they called his name Esau. They called his name Esau. Come on. And after that came his brother out. So now Esau's brother finna be born. Come on. And his hand took hold of Esau's heel. Now his hand, he grabbed hold of his brother's heel while he was coming out. Read. And his name was called Jacob. Hold on. They ain't said nothing about his color, bro. Why? He look like everybody else. You see that? He look like everybody else. Now when we go back to 2nd Ezra chapter uh, 6 and verse 8. Read verse 8. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 8. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born. So we just read about when they were born, right? When Jacob and Esau were born, come on. Of him. Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. So his, his hand took hold of his brother who came out first. Read. For Esau is the end of the world. So this is the sign of the parable. He grabbed, what's, what's, what's the end of your body? Hmm. Your heel. This is the sign. Read it again. For he saw the end of the world. 
Esau is the end of the world. What world is going to end? What is the world that's going to end that living in these last days that our foreparents were talking about? What is the world that's going to end? You're about to get an understanding of the world that's going to end. Because there are many worlds out there. You got the sea world. Right. You got the animal world. Right. You got the sports world. Right. Right. There's many different worlds out there. So it says Esau is what? Well, Esau is the end of the world. He's the end of the world. Come on. And Jacob is the beginning of that follower. Read it again. For Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. Now, Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. What's the it that followed? Jacob's world. Now, that's good. that means that the sign what, that what is being explained right here is the end of Esau's rulership. Right. The end of the so-called white man's rulership on earth. Right. That is what the end of the world means. Salvation means that we are going to be saved. Give me that in Luke. Give me that in Luke chapter 1. Give me that in Luke chapter 1. Salvation means that when Esau's world is taken down, when the white man's world is taken down by Christ, the black Messiah, you are going to be restored back into your rightful place of the earth. You are going to be brought back into rulership. Esau will no longer rule. Now I'm going to show you this. Give me that in Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Yep. Read. This is the, this is the book of Luke chapter 1, and verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Blessed be the Lord God of who? Israel. Here go Israel right here. This is you. Blessed be the Lord God of your, of you, Israel. Come on. For he hath visited and redeemed his people uh -huh. and hath raised up an horn of salvation. They go, they go to the word salvation again. He's raised up a horn of salvation. For us. For who? For us. For the white man. For us. For the Chinese man. For us. For the Arab man. For us. For us. Yes. That horn of salvation was raised up for us. Right. We the Israelites. Come on. In the house of his servant David. Now, give me Isaiah chapter 14. I'm going to show you. Esau's world is going to end. And guess where you're going to be put back, bro? In your rightful place. But there's something you got to do. You got to repent. You got to get. You got to change your ways. And you got to throw white man Jesus on your neck. Oh, wait. That's what you got on your neck right there. That ain't the Savior. Yeah, you see, you see that right all, there? It's all they sell like this. Yeah. I'm going to show you something about that. Read. <laughs> This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 1. Bring it out. For the Lord would have mercy on Jacob. Come on over here, brother. I got good news for you. The Lord is going to have mercy on Jacob. Listen as you walk away. The Lord is going to have mercy on Jacob. Jacob is the so-called black, Hispanic, and native Indians. You are the 12 tribes of Israel. The Lord is going to have mercy on you. Read. And will yet choose Israel. He's yet going to choose the children of Israel. Come on and set them in their own land. God is gonna set us back in our own land. This ain't our land. Remember, your parents came here on slave ships. Your foreparents came here on slave ships. This ain't our land. God says he's gonna set us back into our own land. Come on. And the strangers shall be joined with them. Who are the strangers? The strangers are the ones that did this right here. The strangers are the ones that did this to your people. What? He says the strangers, they gonna join with us. Come on. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. They're going to cleave to us. You know what it means to cleave to somebody? When they see the destruction of that white man going down, they're going to run and grab. I want to go with you. I'm a, I'm a, I want to be a part of y'all. They're going to run and grab and cleave to us. Read. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. Now we're going to take them because they're going to cleave to us. We're going to take them to our place. Where is our place? Our place is Jerusalem. Because this ain't our land. Remember, we're the Israelites. We came from our homeland because we broke God's commandments. We broke God's commandments. He put us in slavery on slave ships, and we came to this country. This is not our land. But when salvation comes, when that sky cracks and Christ comes, he's going to put us back into our homeland. That's right. Read. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land with servants. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. A p possessed? Whose keys are those? Is that your possession? Hey, are they are they mine? That's your. That you own that, right? Hold on, read that again. And the people shall take them. The people that's going to take them is you. If you're keeping God's commandments, you're going to be a part of the people that take the people who oppressed you. You're going to take them. Come on, and bring them to their place. We're going to bring them to our place. Come on. And the house of Israel, the house of Israel, you black, Hispanic, and Native American men, shall possess them. Possess. Who keys are those? 
ownership. Yeah, you're going to take ownership of the people that took ownership of you. That's you're going to own the people that owned you. Now, is this racism? Is this racist? This is the truth, brother. This is the truth. Come on. I got to go down. They shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. They're going to be servants and handmaids when we get back to our land. Right. That's the way it's going down. That's the way this is happening. What you got to do, brother, is repent. First, take that chain off. Well, keep the he chain. Just told me that. Keep the chain. Get rid of the charm. <laughs> the charm is garbage. Go, go take it. Hey. Sell it to the white man and tell him to melt it down. Go to the white man, tell him to melt this down and give me my give me my uh my measure in in in, in weight. I'm telling you, yeah, give me that in back real quick. I know you gotta go. I'm talking to Q dogs at first. Oh no, sir. It's better than Q dogs. Yeah, this is way better than Q dogs. They just stomping concrete. We stomping doctrines. Appreciate All right, it, read what you got. Give me that. Uh, oh, yes, sir. Read that. Habakkuk chapter two verse eighteen. Listen to this as you read. What profit of the graven image? He says, what profit is there in that graven image? Come on. That the maker thereof have graven it. So somebody graven it. They fashioned, they formed it, they made it. Come on. The molten image. It's a molten image. And a teacher of lies. It's a teacher of lies, brother. Why? Because it teaches that this is Jesus Christ. Right. That's what they teach. So if a brother don't know nothing about Jesus Christ, when they see that on your neck, you know what they say? Oh, he believe in Jesus. But no, that's not the right Jesus. Nation is men leading by example.